Hello and welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. In the last episode we did a few simple uh, baby 8 sequencers. Those are CV sequencers. Uh, in this case 8 steps. You can make them ten, up to 10 steps. Actually longer uh, and uh, any step below 10. But with one 4017 you can make a baby 10 down to a baby one if you wanted to. So in this episode we're gonna add buttons uh, so or switches. What that means is that we can either add buttons or switches as well uh, with the uh, potentiometers to get CV and gate output. We can also add uh, uh, switch for resetting the the clock or the the, the counter which and, and now we get to that baby 8 or baby 10 or baby 4 uh, so we add another switch which or we get one of those switches that go up and down and if we flip it the other way around we get a switch that resets the uh, sequencer and goes back to the beginning so we can make really strange uh, if we have many sequencers we can make many different rhythms and get polyrhythms 5-7 and different kinds like that. We can also remove the potentiometers and only have the switches and then we get a gate sequencer um, that for making drums and stuff like that, for example. Getting the gates to work we need to add an AND gate uh, with the clock input and that is because um, when you switch step there is no pause in between so you have step 1 uh, going high and you have step 2 and when they meet they meet at the exact same time uh, and then 3 and so forth all the way down so there what the output looks like is just a straight 5 volt or 12 volt whatever output you have uh, voltage so that's why we need to add an AND gate with the clock signal which will chop up each step into two and I would also like to say thank you to my patrons who support me over on patreon and by doing that get some extra perks and behind the scenes look of what happens in the studio uh, and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things right now is January which is just a few short jams, one for each day which I managed to do for eight days and then uh, work started and there was no time whatsoever to continue doing that. Um, so, but there's eight of those if you are interested. So head over to Patreon if you feel inclined to do that. Otherwise, let's get into how to build this one. So how do we put this together? In the last episode, we added the potentiometer with a diode. And then we also added the LED just to show at which step we're at. Adding the switches is the same thing or instead of if you just want gates and no CV it is instead of if you want both CV and gate then it's AND. So on each output where you connect the potentiometer you also connect a button or a switch. Also with a diode because again we don't want the signal to go backwards and mess with the other uh, outputs which might happen. All the connectors, so there's 16 connectors here, I'll explain that in a bit, but so all eight of these connectors connect to, all to connect to one point and then that point is going into uh, a 4081, an AND circuit. This is one AND gate and this is because we need to condition the gate output 
so there's a pause in between each step. So when it goes from step one to step two, uh, there needs to be a pause in between, which there isn't if we just uh, cycle through without uh, an AND gate. So we AND the gated out signal with the clock input. So we add a connection from the clock input to the second input of the AND gate, and then the output of that AND gate is the gate out. So the, where the gate is half the cycle of each step is high and then low the second half of that step. While we're on the subject of buttons and switches, we can add another row of buttons to each of these steps and in the same manner connect to one uh, point uh, and that point will we can use as the reset if we want to have uh, polyrhythms or, or different uh, divisions of rhythms we can use that to reset the circuit from any step by adding another switch on each step. However because the, the, the potentiometer over here acts a bit like a voltage divider and we're drawing current to the gate output and the CV and now also for the uh, reset and that means that we're getting low in, in voltage which means that we can't be sure that the voltage on the output from the reset switches is high enough to reset the circuit. So what do we do th then? We add a comparator. So a voltage divider over here, 100k to VCC and 1k to ground, gives us around 1 volt in uh, threshold. And then we take the input from the switches, reset switches, into the positive side, and we also add the ninth step. Q8 uh, to the input, we add a 1K resistor to make sure that uh, the signal doesn't go backwards there, and we add that as well, and the output will then, as soon as it's over 1 volt, it will be conditioned to 12 volts, which is high and good, and we will get a reset of the circuit. We can also add a reset input here. Uh, and we can do that either like that or we should actually add that down here as well. But I'll talk more about that in the next episode. And in reality it could look something like this. This is just my prototyping board just to get all the components in one place. Uh, this is not a finished product in any way, just easier than trying to make something uh, on here for example. I, this is already getting crammed. So now we have the 4017, 4081 and the TL074 uh, and yeah it's connected according to schematics and in this case I'm just using dip switches so dip number two on each is the gate and dip number one is the reset pin. I also have something I'm working on that looks like this uh, soap sequencer on a panel. So it's just one panel with all the components, surface mount of course, um, not done yet, I'll get back on that. Another thing you could use instead of dip switches or just normal switches is a switch like this which has a center position as well. So in the center position the middle pin is not connected to anything. In that position the center pin is connected to that one and in that one it's connected to that one. And this is good because then you just need one switch on a panel for example that pressed up is the gate so and in the middle it's not a gate and when it's down 
it is a reset and like this because you never need a gate and a reset at the same time so this is a real space saver uh, although it is if you happen to take this down to remove the step at the same time as the clock goes by and you accidentally push it too far that uh, you would accidentally get a reset there but it's an interesting uh, piece of hardware that could be used in a good way in this project. So what can we do with this? Right now I have a slow CV going up here and a bit faster down here and as you can see it jumps over two steps and that's because we've turned those off. We can turn them on and then we have them all on. So a gate sequencer simply and then we can if we instead take the this one so we turn on the reset and now we're just playing these three over and over. So this opens up for some fun polyrhythmic uh, moving melodies and, and rhythms that you can make with this. And here we have another example where I take the just the gate output of this sequence uh, playing three uh, bass drum, uh, three pause one pause one and then the last one is uh, reset so it's only seven steps long and that gives it a forward moving pattern And with that we have a little bit more interesting sequencer, both gates and uh, CV or two different kinds, one with gate and one with CV. I have loads of interesting concepts in my mind on how to make these because either this isn't a good form factor uh, with these big uh, potentiometers I can't really take up this much space in the modular and this was just a prototyping board I did just to put all the components and get jacks out and as you can see it is not um, ready to put in the modular. I have been working on this little thing right here Uh, which uh, isn't working well enough to uh, share it more than this uh, it's called soap sequencer on a panel and it has all the features that we've done uh, up to till now and a few of the things uh, that we'll talk about in the next episode um, not working though but uh, so we have eight CV and eight gates and then we have eight uh, reset buttons as well or switches and this is all with these uh, dip switches so it's a little bit fiddly and it's all in one panel so it's uh, surface mounted components on the back also on the front actually all the LEDs are surface mounted and I did that by hand and yeah 
there's also uh, cascade out and cascade in to cascade many of these after each other to get a longer uh, sequence. Uh, I have to get back on this one uh, once I get it to work uh, satisfactory and uh, maybe I can make a PCB run and get some of these in the shop. I think it's quite an interesting concept to have all the components on the front like this. It's a bit like teenage engineering but for modular. Um, but I have to get back with a functioning module before we dive into that. So anyway, I uh, hope you liked this video. There's one more video uh, with the sequencer to add the a few controls to this. Hold, step, preset, uh, start, stop, stuff like that. And with that, uh, press the like button if you liked it, uh, subscribe and the bell button is apparently really important nowadays. Everyone says that because YouTube has changed something in the algorithm. So if you don't get notifications of my new episodes and you would like those, I guess the bell button is the way to go. Take care until the next time. Bye.